All right. So um, uh, the main purpose of this meeting is is to review the results we got in from the salary planning activity that's been going on. So uh, last time we met, um, we said that I had uh, given you a template and then people were to uh, create their salary planning plans and then uh, send them back and then we'd consolidate them and take a look at them. We to, so today our our goal is to review what we've gotten in. Uh, our goal uh, is not to approve or disapprove. We have no authority with regards to that. We uh, we simply are reviewing and making uh, observations, recommendations, uh, maybe recommendations, uh, uh, and um, and this is a t hey. Let's face it. This is a tough subject, right? Uh, so um, let's just be, you know, sensitive to what we're we're talking about and um, speak in uh, specific terms, not in uh, you know generalities. You know, we always used to have a joke when we'd be hiring an executive at uh, at work, and they'd say, "Well, how how is the how is the candidate? Oh, he's a good he's a good guy. He's a good guy. What does that mean?" Good, you know, I had no idea. Can he add? Can he subtract? Can he speak? So we got to be kind of specific when we start talking about, again, not people, but positions. We'll try and eliminate any name, um, reference to names and things like that. Um, I would like to share. Um, can you all see this? Yes. Okay. okay, good. All right. So uh, this is the this is just the overall uh, all the um, uh, positions we have in the town and we've broken them out like we, said, like we showed last week. We, we break them out uh, into police department and all others. Uh, we had put this uh, process together uh, that we're not following. Uh, so once we get done with this round, we'll we'll, we'll revise this. But um, uh, so um, so we were to recommend the town pay increase budget. We didn't do that. Uh, town council and treasurer to approve the budget. So obviously that didn't happen. Uh, split employee populations. We did that. A portion to 2021 increased budget to police department and all others. We did that. Uh, the managers or boards will plan uh, the individual merit pay increases based on performance and position to market and not to, no, we didn't have the budget. And so return in, increased planning sheet to human resources committee to check for compliance to guidelines. So we're kind of at this step right here. Um, and then next would be the uh, uh, clerk treasurer sense reviewed increased plan to town council for Review, this should be like review and approval, I guess. Right? Correct. Okay. So so let's just let's just jump into this. Uh, Mark, uh, I really appreciate you sending your information over uh, on a timely basis and and, uh, and complete. So um, uh, let me just show you what we have here. So we have each of the uh, uh, positions within the police department. We have their current hourly rate. Um, and then this is still from last time. I put down 1.3% of the current hourly rate. And I, I use that just because uh, that the LaPorte County COLA for this year is uh, 1.3. So that's why I just dropped that in there. And so then the annualized, uh, uh, the annualized base pay here, uh, would is is the hourly rate times uh, twenty one eighty four because the 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 police uh, work a, a, a twelve hour schedule so that's the number of hours that they straight time hours that they actually work uh, so. Uh, and then we have again uh, how much that would if we gave one point three percent increase what that would be, and then this is from our salary survey uh, the market pay rate if known, 
And then we said, this was how, how much above or below this market uh, rate are we? So you can see there's a, a number of uh, positions that are above. There's a few that are below. And then here's where the magic comes in. Um, so this was the um, recommendation the, that, that Mark sent in. Um, so, it, so this was, this is maybe, uh, I, I guess, well, maybe this is most relevant, but uh, this is the dollars per hour uh, that the individual would be received, the increase that's being proposed. And then this was simply the um, uh, dollars per hour as a percentage of the uh, current pay. So $2 an hour is 14.5% of um, this, this position's pay. Okay? When I added up uh, the amount that we'd be spending in addition, it says uh, we'd be spending about 3.8% more uh, for um, uh, if, if all these increases are approved as, as written. And that's simply the, the amount of increases versus what they're currently being paid in total. So what Questions? What thoughts? What I? I mean, um, Mike, is that that uh, plan merit increase? That's actually base pay strictly, right? Yes, correct. Yes. Okay. Yep. And Mike, those hours worked per week by the policeman is that standard across the industry or across the people who we looked at when we did the survey? No, it's. The, it, it, it is not. We're all. Go ahead, Bill. It, it is not. I mean, you know, I because I, I did this a couple of years ago, and and you know, some people work uh, four ten hour shifts, some people work five eight hour shifts, and and this had been just the accommodation that seemed to work best for us. At one point in time, I think we were working twenty four hour shifts, like 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 firemen, and that seemed to be not so. Basically. When you work, when you work seven 12 hour shifts in a in a two week period, you get eighty four hours. No, no, wait, but, but two hours more. That's why Mike said you know, 20, 20, 80 is 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 our street and water and regular employees, and then and then twenty one eighty four another one hundred and four hours is what we get for police. In, in okay, a, but but going back to the the initial question. The survey uh, normalized for hours worked. Oh, it did. Okay. Yes. So it, it were. This is apples to apples. Yes. Okay. So. Um, so one. Other, one other question. Yeah. Go ahead. One question I would have, Mike, when we present this to the town board, yeah, the 3.8 percent, if yeah. we multiply that times the annualized base pay back there, so that's roughly what? Uh, Ten thousand three hundred and sixty-three. Yeah, dollars. ten grand. Okay, okay, you got it right there. So that number essentially, without overtime and without uh, longevity pay or anything like that, which the longevity will just inch up. But the overtime will be directed by Mark, and that may or may be up or down depending on what happens yeah. during here. But yeah. that, and pension is also not in, pension also goes up. Pension right. Pay. But in terms of the monetary for the budget and finance guys, we're talking you know ten grand in base pay. If it, we'd have to analyze what portion of the budget last year was overtime, and then get a rough feel for that. Probably Mark, that might not be a bad number to have when we approach the budget guys, just to say. Hey, we're talking about a, a total cost impact of 15, 20, whatever that turns out to be, roughly speaking. And not to hold you to the number, but I think that might be nice for them to hear that as we make these adjustments. For, well, for the, so this was the this was the overtime, right? So yeah, for, last year for last year. So if we do that, we can do that easily. Uh, this equals uh, this. Uh, times um, 
point zero three eight that's another thirteen hundred dollars say yeah so we're less than 15 grand in total financial impact for next year so roughly speaking yeah and, and john just to to add to that on my behalf what i had recommended was the administrative assistant position which was the one that we all um, I think can agree upon was drastically under the averages across the salary study. That was a $2 an hour raise on that particular employee. So that was the largest increase. Then on the deputies, I was treating all the deputies the same. Um, my recommendation was a 2% raise across the board for all the deputies um, above the 1.3 COLA. Um, I would like to just add, obviously, as the, the new kid to the team here, that as such a small town with only, you know, 11 full-time employees in that, my personal opinion is if we're going to give, you know, street or water a 3% raise, then I would hope that, you know, our employees would see the same raise rather than getting two compared to a three. Um, I've heard some of the history from previous raises where, Police were given 1.9 and other departments were given a 3% raise. And I do know that causes some, some tension, some animosity between employees. Um, I'd hate to see that happen, but that's just my personal feelings. I wanted to throw that out for the town council for consideration, because um, I'm sure I'll hear about it from our employees. So yeah. just food for thought. And I appreciate appreciate that. Yeah, I guess I guess my my thought is is we did a survey that showed that our deputy marshals were over the average. And if we give just a straight raise to everybody, then we might as well not have done the survey. Um, right. right. I guess I guess my thought is, is, you know, our, our employees who are being compensated above the average, if we're ever going to get back to be more in line with other surrounding communities, we need to start giving those employees that are above the average a smaller raise. Otherwise, we'll never get there and we'll just stay where we're at. Uh, of course, the average isn't the goal uh, necessarily. Uh, it's mm -hmm. a goal for all employees, I would I would say. Uh, you know, um, everyone melded, melded together. Um, well, of course, that goes back to what uh, Kristen said. What's our what's our compensation philosophy? Yes. You know, some, place, some places say we want to be ten percent over the average, just in yep. general. I mean that's just our our position. Uh, that's something that we'll have to take a little more uh, time to consider, right? Well, and if we want to be ten percent, then having somebody at seventeen percent and fourteen percent is definitely not re reaching our goal. Yeah, yeah, no, no, you're right. No, yeah, 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 yeah. When you, yes, right. That, that's right. Right, 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 right. Um, the other thing I would, uh, again, I recognize Mark for here. He has a police officer that will be, maybe, probably be leaving. And, but yet he still planned them in for a, 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 an increase, right? He could have very easily made it a zero and then he had the extra dough, but he didn't, he played it straight. And I appreciate that, Mike. And the, the reason for that is that particular officer has been doing an exceptional job in, with just the limited experience he has. Um, he's one of our top performers. So I'm, I'm very pleased with his performance. Okay. Good. And what do we anticipate his replacement will come in at in terms of salary? Uh, my recommendation, Dr. LeMay, at some point probably is going to be at the minimum probably forty-six to fifty-one thousand dollar range, somewhere in that five thousand dollar market range. I think when Mike and I looked at our our salary range for a deputy. It was as low as 43, and Mike was as high as 57, I believe. Uh, you know what? I don't, honestly, I don't recall, but. Um, yeah. But 
depending upon the experience that I think we're going to gain, um, I, I would say we're going to be in the, the forty six to fifty one thousand dollar range where the current employee now is fifty thousand five hundred yep. with two years experience. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I, I kind of like the idea. I like to think that we're a better than average community. And I'd like to think that our employees are probably worth 10% above the, whatever, I guess, call it going rate. I met maybe a bad term. And so if, if, if there's nothing wrong with making that our goal, right? And so if we made that a goal and say we decided we wanted to get to that goal over the next, say, two years, then would there be anything wrong with saying, okay, so if we got an employee who's making 17% above the average, let's cut that down 5% to 5% above the average. Is, is, I guess that's a pay cut, right? So, so you'd, it'd actually be no increase if you wanted to get there, right? Over time. Well, it depends how you do it. If you want to do it yeah. in one in twelve months, yeah, that's a that's a yeah, one we don't I don't think we want to give years. people pay cuts. But but what if we said no raise above the one point three percent if you're above ten percent above the average? Is that is that onerous? Is that you know, am I looking like Simon Legree? What I I, I, I don't know. I, I don't do this all every day, so I guess well, I'm asking. That's that's what we're talking about. Our what is our philosophy, and then we try to get as close to that on a consistent basis as we can. Uh, you know, we have some outliers, I think, in in the plus column and in the minus column. Mm -hmm. So, if we feel like we need to adjust the outliers, then we look at that from some sort of philosophy, philosophical basis. And I agree. I I don't think we necessarily have to. You know, Mike Mike, and also. New Age said the same thing. You don't, it's personal preference. It's, we don't have to be at the average. Um, right, right, right. But, but I think out of this meeting, we ought to have some recommendation for what, you know, traditionally there's been this 3% or whatever they used. Yeah, if right. Wanted, right. I would suggest that we might want to have as part of this ongoing goal of having some consistency. If we have a percentage, whether it's based on that 1.3 cola, or we say it's 2%, or whatever we come up with, yeah. in general, for anybody that's not an outlier, where we're making corrections based on significant differentials to the market survey, then I think we come up with some kind of a recommendation for the town council from this meeting that says, generally speaking, anybody that's not an outlier is going to be in the range of blah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mark, Mark kind of set the bar at two. Yeah. I don't have a problem with that. Well, he said it at 3.8, but... Uh, well, I'm talking about individually, Mike, for the most yeah. part, yeah. but you're right, yeah. Now, keep in mind, the budgetary impact of our jump from, on the part-times from 20 to 25 will be somewhat significant, and I don't know, Mark, you know, that's a budgetary thing. You'll know more as you get into the year how much of the use you'll make of those guys, but that, that'll be over above this the two numbers we just discussed as far as total financial impact. Well, actually, if you look, John, it, we know what that is. It, so the impact on the straight time only is uh, is uh, $762. Because they don't work that much. Assuming, yeah, assuming that we work them the same, similar yeah. to what. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got it. Okay. I, I, oh, go Go ahead. The last thing that I want, to, I want to remind everybody, and I mean, I know it's important to have consistency. When I came in in 2012, I was told that, you know, we paid above scale, but until I listened to New Focus explain that that is a policy that we can, you know, we can elaborate, we can, we can, we can actually speak to, which sound, which makes sense to me. Yeah. But the one other thing I want to tell you is that since I'm the guy who writes the checks, um, you know, we, we can, we still want to be consistent with salary, but when Mitchell Sites goes away, 
his his neck to the town is ten thousand dollars a year for health insurance and if the guy who comes in comes in with a family his nick to the town is twenty five thousand dollars and i'm not saying we have to say we can't have anybody who's not single coming in but the point is and you know so there when we talk about these issues there are some bigger numbers than than just three percent yeah that's outside the scope of this kind no, i know that i know that but it's just it's something that that uh, i want to understand mm -hmm. yeah good um um there's something else I was going to say here. I can't. Oh, oh. So, so what, Bob? So, uh, what we're going to do? What we would do is, if we were to come up with our uh, compensation philosophy, what we would do is is pick a level and then cost it out. Yep. Say over the next three years, if we say we want to be ten percent on over, five percent over, whatever, what's that really going to cost us over the next three, four, or five years? Yes. Yeah. So yeah, we I, should we should do that once we figure out what that, or maybe we cost out a few ideas and then 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 figure out which one we want to pick. I mean, we could cost out different percentages, I suppose, yeah. too, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then decide. I mean, maybe that's the most rational way to do it, because just picking ten percent out of the air and not knowing what it's going to cost us is not a good way to run a municipality, much less a business. Right. Right. Okay, I'd like to let's move on to uh, our other group of employees then. Okay, unless there's anything else here. Well, the only th the only thing I along what with what Bob's saying then, if if we take the 270 on column F, and the 10 on column M, and the column on S, then if you combine those, that's uh, 45 and 270, so that's 320 or something. That's your your running payroll for the police, so to speak, right? Yep. Yeah. So it's two sixty nine. It will be two sixty nine. So it's uh, two hundred and seventy nine thousand six hundred ninety five. Plus the thirty four on the overtime. Plus the yeah. So that's what I think. Plus those two. Yeah. So call, it's call it fifty on two seventy is three twenty. So three fifteen. Bob, if if we jump that by. One percent either way, you're looking at, you know, thirty grand or twenty five, thirty grand, in in impact overall, re, independent of what Bill's talking about, which again is something for the budget guys, but it's not for us. Yeah. Well, and I guess my proposal would be everybody gets the one point three percent, and people who would be above whatever percentage we decide, and we cost out the different ones. If you're above, say we pick 10%, if you're above 10% above the mean, then you just get the 1.3 and we should be able to cost that out and we could cost that out at seven and eight or, yeah. you know, we, yeah. we, yeah. we cost that out at different percentages, right? Right, right, right. But let's move forward, I think, uh, yeah. that will shed some, a little more interesting light on this. Okay, so here's the here is the uh, how do I minimize this? I gotta get rid of this. Okay. Okay, so here is the uh, the, the rest of the town. So it's, so it's the same the same information. Um, I, I these are in red because I'm not sure that I received a note from Bill. Uh, an hour or so ago that was different than what we've been, the numbers we've been using. So I got to double check this. Um, but we, we went through the same, same thing. And then, so here were the, here were the plan merit increases, uh, the, the, the increases that are being requested now, right? So, um, uh, so here we see uh, $3 and then 88 cents and, and, all the way down. And you see the percentages, um, 17, 3, 12, 4.95, 1.8. We're missing two, we're, we have two positions that we don't have a recommendation for, the building inspector and the BZA uh, administrative assistant. So those aren't in there. But you see a, a different uh, flavor of, uh, um, increase um, 
planning here, right? Um, so, you know, whereas on, on the police side, we, Mark was, you know, hovering in that 2% range, we're kind of all over the board here. Um, so, but one, one comment I'd like us to consider is that, and I'm not saying it's, you know, the survey was what we were doing to get ourselves right size. But I will tell you that not just with this employer, but with others, um, the, we tended to do more of the outlier planning for, for part-timers in the past. In other words, if a part-timer was, was under scale, we might raise them. But we did not give 1.3 or 3% raises to part-timers just on the basis of their being here because they were, in fact, part-timers. So, you know, so that, and maybe that's not something we should be doing, and maybe that's not proper um, human resources planning, but I'm, I'm saying there's, you know, I, there are some people, I don't want to get into specifics right now, but there are some people that I think deserve more than a raise, and others may be just at, at, at scale, and they should, they should remain. You know, I mean, I, I don't say they should be cut in pay, but I, but maybe that's I'd like to get a to hear what other people think. Should should part timers get a get a flat raise at one point three percent or whatever the magic number is, just on the basis of them being here? Comment. I guess to me the one point three percent is you know kind of I, I I guess my thought is we continue like we're doing what we did with the police and say okay we. We give everybody the 1.3 because that's cost of living. But then I think we look at where we're at in terms of the target to decide on further increases. Yeah, I, I mean, but we had, that was the whole purpose was to say outliers would be considered and then we consider whatever a general cost of living increase, whatever that's going to be. Yep. Uh, but uh, with the, but do, do we, do we feel that, that part-timers, I mean, I'd rather have the part-timers be evaluated as part-timers, and I'm sorry I didn't. We didn't. We didn't do that with building inspector and BZA secretary and everything else. But, but um, I, I, you know, those those need to be considered. I think probably outside the scope of just a, an increase. Are they if they're if they're equivalent to what their their uh, you know their services are? then they could stay the same if they're underpaid and they should be increased. But, uh, but not, but I, but it, am I, am I okay in saying that just an arbitrary 1.3% does not need to be offered to the, to the part-timers? Well, I, I guess I don't understand why we would not want to do that especially given the fact that our part-timers aren't getting benefits, right? Yeah, I understand that, but I mean, yeah, but, but, but uh, I guess, you know, I, so, no. so that the, that the, I only, the part -timers. that's already a raise for the, for the, for the uh, part-time officers. They've okay. already, uh, They've, the part-time police officers have already. Yeah, been, been taken care of. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're, they're good. Yeah. And, and I have a question on the seasonal employees that are probably employed two months. Um, if Mike could speak to the fact of our survey that I'm not sure we need to give them an increase because they're already, are they at 42% higher than most? Well, this one individual, uh, this one individual is higher. The, the, the rate is 10 bucks and this one's at 14 and a quarter. Uh, uh, just a quick question, guys. On these part-timers, Bill, do we make, do we, I, I assume, and I don't know, everybody including the building, is, all the part-timers in yellow right here, do we take payroll taxes out of all theirs and pay our share of payroll taxes? Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. So, and, you know, and we can, 
and we can talk. I mean, we should talk about this. But you, the 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 uh, impact, budget impact, uh, is de minimis. I think in in many of yep. these cases, right? Yeah. I mean, we're, we're, I mean, just you know, it's small potatoes. Yeah, for these positions here, if we do the one point three percent, it's it's uh, it's I can't I've hidden my thing. Four hundred bucks. Four hundred and sixty-nine dollars. So, I mean, over the year, course of the year, so we, we can spend a lot of time on this, but yeah. the the impact is uh, yeah. some. Hey, Mike, I think Sarah Pluster has her hand up. Oh, you see that? Oh, okay. Okay. How do hey. I do? Go ahead. It, it's me. Um, I'm sorry if it's really loud. I'm at Disney World right now. Um, our, we don't need a raise as a whole. We've never taken a raise for anything with summer camp as the town has done that. We've always stuck to our same baseline and haven't in years past where that's taken place. We've not done that. We just kept it steady. So that's something you guys don't have to offer us. Our employees in that regard don't expect that at all. Um, wait. So I'm. I'm. You, I, so these increases that you've planned. Are you saying that? I, say what you said again. I, I've, okay. I'm, I'm a little lost. Sorry. You're breaking up, Sarah. No, we, we can't, we're not hearing you, Sarah. Technology is excellent, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Sarah, you're uh, maybe you could. I don't know how you, how you've called in, but we're we're not hearing you. It's kind of like a, a muffled uh, uh, electronic voice or something. Sound well, like Darth Vader. Um, cans or some kind of additional. Mike. Yeah. If you, if you go back and look at our work that we did early on as a committee. Um, they actually have gotten 7% increases, the uh, 6 and 7%. And I think the one that we have it, uh, I, I had when you and I worked on these numbers that one made 1850, one made 1425, and one made 13. And they got raises uh, when the town employees were getting 1.9. So um, they have had increases, and that's what our the, I have those payroll records right here, and they've gotten increases over the year. So, in, wait, in 2021? No. No, no, not in 2021. Well, they did submit some to Bill, if, if Bill's still on here last week, and he put them aside and uh, said. Okay, then, then we received the updated figures from Sarah, and he, I put those in here. Okay, okay. but. That one is already um, on my re payroll record is already at eighteen fifty. Yes, I don't. They yeah, don't she's not. Uh, that, that was not an increase requested, uh, Mary. Okay, then there was a okay. Then there's a fourteen twenty five and a thirteen. Right. And maybe there's another thirteen. They're right here. These were the ones I have were specific by name. Yeah. The, okay. I, yeah. Okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure of that. Okay. I, I will say, I will say in Sarah's defense that one of the salaries, which it kind of caught my eye, that that, that that I thought seemed to be too much. We, she was talking about a three dollar and twenty five cent per hour increase, but it was moving the person from being a a worker bee to being a a, a director. So you know, yes. whether you want to argue about that or not, but it was it was. That's this. That's this line. Yeah. That's this line. I don't have. Yeah. That. yeah. Okay. Line, so that line, that line that you're on then is is not a activity director. It's a different descriptive. Yeah. 
well, this person is going to be promoted this year to a director level position. Okay. But I don't know what the, I, I and, and the, the um, I don't know what they earned last year as a non-director. So I didn't put it in. It, it was, it was, I looked it up, uh, Mike, it, that particular individual that we're talking about was making 1025 an hour as a, okay. as a, as a worker bee. Okay. So the, the request I think was 325 increase to get to 1350. So if I, if I read this spreadsheet, maybe I'm not reading it right here, Mike, if I'm in column F, that's your number of hours worked in the prior year times, whatever their rate was, correct? For the part-timers. Right. So for the, the part program, so to speak, it takes in line nine through 14. Am I correct there? Mm -hmm. so yeah. We're talking about like three grand or something. Nine through. 14 so that so just last year they earned tw yeah 2700 that didn't include number three and four though so let's assume yeah. another 1500 there so you're talking about something less than five grand for that whole mess right oh yeah yeah but this wouldn't be 1500 yeah it'd be it'd be significantly less than that i think well altogether you you you're talking about somewhere between 3 and 5000 for that whole park program operation yes i would i'm guessing that's correct so you know rather than spend a lot of time on this and since they're all above the range and and hopefully sarah will call back in here but i guess my thought is is why not just give them all 1.3% then we're consistent and no, and no increase beyond that, because what's 1.3% going to cost us? $200? Right, what's well, right here? 1.3% is... Uh... Not even. <laughs> it's peanuts. Yeah. So, you I know... Mean, like, the, whole, the whole, when they have a full year, it's like 17 grand for all of the counselors, program people, everything else. So 1.1% 1. 1 of that would be, you know... 100. 70. Oh, so these numbers reflect 2019 with the COVID? Yeah. I'm sorry, 2020 with the COVID? Mm. Correct. I'm sorry, not 17, but 170. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a couple hundred dollars. So these numbers reflect the year with the COVID when we didn't have a summer camp? No, no, no. 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 Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm giving you the numbers where we did have a summer camp. Okay, so this was probably from like twenty nineteen or something. Okay, so so really, if we give everybody one point three percent, then we're being consistent across the board, right? Well, with with them, yeah, yeah. Except well, and I guess let's. How do we want to handle the promotion? Can the promotion can a person move up a grade without? I mean. Ten ten dollars and fifty cents plus one one point three percent, or ten twenty five is what she was making. How many directors are we going to have this summer? Do we know? Four. I'm sorry. Four right here. Four. Okay, so it's it, it's still going to be four. It's not going to be five. Yeah. I'm just going to say we're going to have all chiefs and no Indians. No, no, they got. They're oh, good. these are the, these are the Indians here. I don't know how many we have these. Okay. And and so and Sarah said, "Do see the, these are the Indians?" And they were, she was paying thirteen bucks. Now she said she's going to pay uh, eight sixty three. Oh no, uh, no, 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 no! I take that back. Uh, my thirteen minus three fifty is uh, nine fifty. She's going to pay him nine fifty instead of thirteen. Uh, I, I guess you know. So she's taking a haircut here, uh, you know, with the with the this level of uh, person, you know, this position. Well, and I I think we should let Sarah, especially since there's no total increase in directors, I think we should let Sarah run her program how she thinks it needs to be run. So. Oh, but the town council's got to approve her plan yeah. here. Yeah. Well, and that I guess I guess I'm speaking as a town council person saying, okay. yeah, I guess I'm 
I'd be okay with this again, since it's it's really such small potatoes. Yeah. What well, one quick point, Bob, on your one point three, if our compensation philosophy is to be a little above market, you'd probably lean toward cost of living plus something. That's why I was kind of thinking two percent was closer to. Well, but aren't they? They're already about well above the uh, average, right? They're all those directors are at 30% above average, right? Correct. Sarah, are you still are you back now? No. no. I think so. Oh, okay. <laughs> Give it a try. Go yeah. ahead and make your point again. Um, we didn't previously follow the times that um, raises were provided. So that doesn't mean that we did not get them. Um, but as the program evolved, it started off with just like more babysitting and has evolved now into extensive planning, group management. Um, they even do like supplies listing and hunting down for us, all kinds of stuff. So as the job evolved, um, so did the pay for that in order to find people that were qualified and had the skill sets needed to provide this and care for the kids. So you probably do see some of those increases as the expectations of a director have drastically changed since I started with the program about 10 years ago. Um, and like speaking for myself, I have only ever received one raise since I started 10 years ago and I don't expect a raise, I don't need a raise. Um, and I also understand that we were not doing, um, thanks to Mike, we were not doing our counselor um, compensation correctly. And because our counselors were making um, income based on a scale. And now we're gonna have one flat fee for counselor regardless of um, experience or background. And that would be set at 950 an hour. Mm. So previously the way that our budget had worked was so long as I came within budget based on what the hard board approved for us, my rates were okay. So if that needs to change, I just need to know the procedure so that I can correctly handle these kinds of things. Okay, well, I hope, so hopefully you've seen the procedure now that we, yes. at, at the end of the year, we'll, we'll not, you know, we'll redo this again in no, November, uh, okay. not too far from where we are now. So we'll be <laughs> doing it in November planning for January 1st, right? So. One yeah. quick question, Mike. Did, did we get, Sarah, did we get job descriptions on what you're calling activity directors that made? Um, yes, yes. John, we did. Yes. Uh, Pam Krieger worked on those with Sarah. Mm -hmm. And so, I am, Mike Kondasek helped too. Yeah. Okay, and I think you yeah. helped us with it too. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we're slotting in basically school teachers Okay. Every one of them is a certified teacher with all updated credentials, CPR certification, suicide certification, all of that kind of stuff. Um, which honestly, for what it's worth, I think <laughs> what we are paying them is a bargain rate compared to what they could be doing other places. So I think the quality of what we're getting for paying is well worth every penny of it. Okay. That's what I'm trying to understand. I, I I don't really know much about that operation, and I was just curious if we're that far off the midpoint no. market, if there was some justification for it. That's all I was trying to understand. That. So the way camp is set up is actually kind of run like a school. I would be considered more like the principal, and then I have an assistant director who's kind of like an assistant principal. The directors are essentially all like classroom teachers. They are the ones that plan, facilitate, manage all of the kids at a given time. The counselors then are like a classroom assistant. They come alongside and help with all the cutting and bathroom breaks and a bloody nose and all that kind of stuff as an activity is going on. And then the counselors take, shepherd the kids from, from activity to activity, right? Correct, that's correct. Yeah. They do the transition time, yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right. So, all right. So, um, what other thoughts, ideas, anything else on the camp uh, proposal here? Okay. So, we'll pass that on to the town. Uh, Thank you so much. I appreciate right. your Thank time. You, Have fun on your vacation. 
Oh, hey, hey, thanks. <laughs> thanks for calling in. Of course, thanks for having me. Okay, all right, so, um, okay. So then, then if we, if we take, let's look at the rest of the, um, let me get those, take those out. So, so this is what we have left then. Um, okay. Uh, so we talked, I don't, did we talk about uh, uh, the deputy administrative assistant, deputy clerk? Um, I, I don't know why, I don't know, I can't get my face on. Bill, we can hear you. <laughs> Based on I said, I'm telling Deanna. Okay. Are you at work? I am. Okay. All right. Well, maybe that has something to do with it. Because at home, we get your picture. No, that's not true. I'm not, I'm not sure. We'll see. Okay. I think some, I, what I tried to do was, was find, prove that I wasn't a robot. And, I, and from there on, I'm stuck. <laughs> well, you should are like, 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 a robot then. <laughs> how many palm trees there are in the damn picture? At least you're not a fire hydrant picture. <laughs> That's a good Sounds one. like a Twilight Zone episode, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, so, just for argument's sake here, so Deanna's listening in here, I'm assuming? No, no, she just she walked in. I wanted my cell phone. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Like so to have, you're going to have some discussion by whoever presented these outliers then for now, or what are we doing next? Yeah. yeah. So, um, so, so Bill, you want to talk uh, for, you know, for a minute about the, the proposal for uh, the administrative uh, deputy. So, so, yeah. I, um, you know, I have known for a long time because I've talked to other, to other uh, clerk treasurers and the, the deputy clerk and administrative assistant, none of them do the amount of work that, that, that this administrative assistant does. So, and I see that she is seriously under the target. And I would, you know, my, my counsel would probably be that because I think she's, she's better than the other ones <laughs> that I know exist in the area. But right now she's also doing much more than she would in the, uh, in terms of the the, uh, the building department, she does you know all of the paperwork and everything for that. So my recommendation is that since she is one of the outliers, that she would be getting a three dollar uh, raise. So that would that would put her from twenty sixty nine to uh, from seventeen sixty nine to twenty sixty nine. Okay. So again, we're not here to, we're just asking questions. We don't approve. Yeah, that's fine. We're just uh, trying to sort through this. Um, any questions about, about that? Well, she's well below the target. Yeah. So she yeah. definitely qualifies for a merit increase based on that in addition to the 1.3%. Uh, as long as she, she's knocking the socks off the performance thing, yeah. Yep. One, one philosophical item for discussion in terms of these outliers is, particularly in light of what, you know, everybody knows everybody else's business. So we've got to be yeah. a little bit cognizant of the fact that if we give somebody that big of a raise, everybody else is going to know it about two minutes later. Yeah. There, it could be that when we've got somebody that's dramatically out of whack, that we could uh, feed that increase in over a time frame rather than do it in one fell swoop. Mm -hmm. Throwing that out for discussion. So well, I don't I don't agree with that because I feel that if the person's doing the job, um we just talked about the promotion to a camp counselor and they automatically got 325 more an hour. So um I personally feel like with uh oh, but with they're the moving into a different job. Yeah, they're taking on additional responsibilities in a different position. This isn't just in in job uh, increase. I mean, to me, it, it, when you tell, tell somebody that you've been underpaid significantly, but we're going to give it to you in a little bit, and a little bit, I, you know, that, that that doesn't. I don't think I can. 
maybe you maybe you want to you know John Wall wants to say that it would sit better with the rest of the team, but uh, you know it just doesn't make any sense to me. Well, I think we have a little okay. stress well, here. Right? You should be paid right. We've got a little stress going on here. If I'll, I'll just call it out. Uh, we've got the police coming in at 3.8, and we've got the rest of the town coming in at almost 7%, okay? How do you, I, I don't, yep. uh, that's a problem, I think. Yeah, that's my point, Bill. Not that I don't agree with your thought about her being off on the market. It's just a question of, you know, consistency and, and parity and fairness and all those kinds of things, whether it's actual, you know, magnitudes or just the perception thereof by the other employees. If we would have done this the other way around, if we would have come out and said 3% is the, is the mark, is the uh, budget, everyone must come in at 3% or less, we'd be forced into doing this. Yep. And now they could, you know, the, the approach with the survey is is uh, admirable. It's just that it, it does uh, point out inequities. The interesting thing is, except for for the part time dispatcher, most of the you know most of the employees, the clerical employees who were looking for increases, uh, you know, are the are, are females, which I don't I don't like. No, no. Yeah. But in any event. So the option would be to give this all at once or to give, say, half of it this year with the anticipation of reevaluating this next year. Well, again, when you look at the kind of raise we're talking about and, and you start comparing some of the other people farther down the chart. Yep. That's when you have to start wondering about the things that I'm talking about. For instance, yep. if you look at the administrative deputy clerk, and, and I'm not saying she's not a wonderful, or that person is not a wonderful employee, Bill, that's not the point. It's just that if you tell somebody that's making 1769 that they're going to 20, and then you tell the guy that's making 1782 that he's going to 17, whatever, I don't know. So that, that's all I'm saying. And, and you know, you're going to have to deal with this as much as any of us. So it's not that I'm disagreeing with you or or even suggesting which way to go but i just it's food for thought well I, so are we talking about are we talking about the this the 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 water department employee we also can't do that i mean i'd like to see that one done too yeah well let's let's we'll, we'll get to the water department well, okay but i mean <laughs> My understanding when we left here last week was I was to contact the water department board. Um, John was going to work with the street department. Bill would take care of his and Mark would handle the, the other employees uh, on the police side, including the dispatcher and the administrative assistant. So I went to the water board and two of my board members responded. And um, so Two, two of them responded and said they felt uh, that they were, uh, let's see, I'm I'm a favor of an increase above the 3% range and more for uh, the water department office manager. Um, and so that's, I thought this meeting was to discuss what they said and, uh, exactly. and as, as the HR committee, which is our group, and then our group will, will uh, make a recommendation to the town council. That's correct. But that's what I got. And then I got Mark's right away, which was great. And then I got John's with regard to the two employees in the street department. Um, and so I, uh, that's what I thought we were working on. But I also agree with Mark that it's only 11 employees. This isn't a huge corporation. And if we need to come up with some equity things, uh, especially for, I would say the year round employees, not the seasonal, because as you know, the word will get around. Um, so those are my thoughts. And I thought that's what we were making a recommendation on from the committee. 
that the Human Resource Committee will now make a recommendation to the council. That's correct. If I'm talking too much, I'm sorry. I'm no, obviously not going to vote on it. Okay. So where are we falling short on that, Mary Lou? Uh, are you, are well, we not I mean, doing that or are we doing All of a sudden, everybody's come out and said, well, I don't, you know, that doesn't seem right. And this isn't right. Well, let's, when we get on to the street department, I think John's recommendation makes that right. That we had an inequity there. It isn't right. And we've known it. And I don't think I want to give the person half this year and say, well, look at it next year. They, we don't have any slackers that I know of. Um, and I think we should pay that person appropriately. So what are you recommending? I'm recommending with what John recommended for uh, the street. It, once we know what the street superintendent is, I, I have a number here and then the street employee. And I think, just a minute, does he, it's, um, Street. Is it in? Let's see. Yes, it's in there. What? Is, I, what is? The increase for the street department person. It's almost. No, it's not quite as quite as high as the deputy clerk. Uh, what? What cells are you referring to? I'm. I'm a little lost. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm looking at the. The street department laborer, which is number four, line four. Yep. Okay. So that was John's recommendation. But I also agree with him and Mark that whatever we do for, I would call them the year round employees, uh, that we should be consistent on that. So there's no hard feelings. And I uh, mean that. Um, so what does that, re re so how does that, what does that look like? Well, consistent. if uh, accordingly, if, if we as a group, the human resource group, decide to recommend to the council for the year-round employees that they get a 3%, that's not the adjustment included, a 3%, um, then I think the, the, the police side should get the 3%. They shouldn't, he shouldn't be held to the 2%. Okay. We had a lot of hard feelings the prior year when police, only two right. people got a 3%. The police are spending 3.8%. But not, okay, Mike, no, I'm talking, those, were, there's two salary adjustments in there. So I wouldn't include that as what, yeah, I know that's what they're spending, but that's not the, in, that's not the merit increase. But I was, on, I came, as Bob will tell you, I was at all the meetings, two employees in 2020 got 3% and the, the other nine got 1.9%. And they, we don't have any uh, dead wood in those departments that I know of. And that it was, uh, we went back, the council went back and made it improve 3% and made it retroactive, but we didn't do that till either July or August. So all I'm saying is I agree with Mark, whatever we do, if we decide on a 3% for all employees and then do the salary adjustment for the uh, administrative assistant, the uh, street department labor and the water department office manager. That's a separate issue as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so your proposal is all employees get 3% all and year there's round. another bucket of money for adjustments. Yes. And, you know, I, I just, I feel very strong about that. They've earned it. Well, no, everybody, we're not saying they haven't earned it. No one, is, no one on this call has said no one's Wait a minute, you don't, you don't need to nitpick me. I'm just saying, that, I mean, I can have my own opinion. And I, I don't, when you make a comment, I don't nitpick you when you talked about the Indians and the Chiefs. That's not appropriate anymore. The, the, might I say something? I, I, it had always been my intention that those people who were the outliers, as we discuss, the ones that, that, uh, the, the water office manager, the CT administrative assistant, and the street employee, that th that would be their increase for the year. The 3% the would not be, because that's that's getting them where they're supposed to be. 
And that then going forward, going in 21 to 22, they could get a, an increase based on what we deem appropriate at the end of the year. But I'm saying anybody else like the, the water superintendent, the water laborer and the, and, you know, and, you know, and the, and the police, yes, that probably should be a consistent number. I kind of agree with Ms. Meredith, but I, I, I never expected that you would add another 3% on that. We're, we're trying to get this thing right. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm saying let's, let's make the adjustment and get them where they need, where they should be. Yeah. And, and that, then, and then and next year, then the other seven, well, maybe it's more than that, but I'm thinking of all the year round people that we yeah. stick with the 3%. But actually, if we include the police, there's two on that side that need an adjustment. So, two, yeah, again, those yeah. Are the, yeah. so five people need to be, uh, Need, need to be corrected, and then and then the then the rest of it. Now, one of them is not a full time employee, but but we're not talking about a lot of money either. Yeah. But, but the other, but the other, but it's four full time employees, and then and then uh, uh, the rest another uh, seven or eight or eight uh, would would get some kind of a consistent raise. That would also be my recommendation. I believe Mark has also spoken, and you know, I, to me, to to give raises different for, uh, you know, I know, I know, we talked about that, but I think to give raises different, we tried that at one point in time that we were going to provide a bucket of money uh, for the police, and then they were going to par parcel out that that money, you know, and somebody one would get a two percent, and one would get a one point eight. And when we get a 3.2, uh, you know, I, I think for the size of the staff, the animosity that you create is greater than what you can gain. I mean, I, I know we're trying to be consistent, but I think at some at some point in time, we're we're, we're acting like a company with 1,100 employees instead of 11. So what again? What's your proposal, Bill? Is My that proposal, different than Mary's? My proposal would be to to provide the to provide the increases for the for those who who the who are who need to be increased to be which would be administrative assistant, street department, administrative assistant in the in the police department. Um, and the uh, water office manager. And, and the part-time dispatcher. And the part-time dispatcher. And then, then the rest of the, the group gets a consistent raise. I, you know, and I, I, and I, I think we need... I, think ever, we I, I, I hate if Mark's still on, I, get, I think I'm gonna ask him to step down since he's already gotten <laughs> salary starting on January. But the rest of... And I know he wasn't asking for any, but but that but that okay. his officers and and uh, the uh, two active work as water department people and the the street superintendent would get uh, uh, would get a raise of whatever is deemed appropriate by them. And and then Mike, on top of that, I would like to see, and I and I do like we're not dealing in names the part-time BZA, APC, administrative assistant, and the building inspector, uh, they're not seasonal, they're year round. And I would like for the, at least us to consider doing something for them. Well, who are their managers? Who's supposed to be giving us the- Well, Larry, well, maybe Larry didn't know this. So I'm gonna say that because maybe he didn't know, but it would be Larry. And then for, uh, uh, for the part-time administrative assistant, it would, I i don't think it's Bob LeMay. I hope not. It's probably Mike Gorman or... Mike Gorman, yeah. All right, let's, yeah, he's not here, Bob, so let's say it was his. And you know what? I, I didn't take that assignment. I'm sorry. I probably should have thought of that. But I mean, we, I still have time uh, to get a hold of him and say, you know, we're looking at this. 
or we could give them the one point, the cost of living increase. Uh, I, I don't know how long the building inspector's been with us, but I think the administrative assistant's been there at least, I want to say five years, but I could be wrong. And so I think we at least should acknowledge something they, uh, you know, that we should do something for them, especially if we're doing something for the seasonal counselors. Yeah, the building inspector has been here several years. Probably five. Yeah, I was thinking five and maybe the other person, uh, the administrative assistant, I want to say at least five, but I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. It's so. more than three, I'm sure. <laughs> Okay. So do you want me to contact Larry and uh, Mike Gorman? Sure, that'd be great. Okay. Now, okay. all the other um, people who are making recommendations are employees of the town or... Um, well, Bob, actually the water board, that's who I contact. Oh, you're right, you're right. Okay, yeah. that's different. You're okay. right, okay. Yeah. And then John was the street department, so they didn't, I don't think, I think he got Tom's input. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm, I will tell them what we're, I will send them the same note that I sent the water board that we were, what we're looking at. I'll ask him to try to get back to us the today's Wednesday. I'm going to ask, hopefully, I think both of them are pretty good about responding. So, um, Hopefully I can get an answer back from them quickly. By the way, everyone on this on this uh, meeting is, is is a town employee, except for Mike Konasek. Right. And I'm hoping that he gets a 50% increase. Good. <laughs> That's fine. Give him 100%. Yeah. Um, it's a good one. So, so if I redo these spreadsheets, um, So if I redo the spreadsheets, every person, every person that is not a, not below this target gets three percent, and everyone that's below gets three percent plus some other amount. Well. We, we want them to, their rates to be corrected, but then don't add another 3%. If that's, Bill, is that how you meant to? I said that's, uh, okay. we're just adding confusion to this. So, so for, for instance, because I did the math before I, so for instance, the, uh, the CT administrator, I didn't do the police side, so I'm sorry. So that increases 17% and uh, over 17%. So then in parentheses, you could say three of that was uh, the regular increase. And then for the street employees, it's 12.23%. And the water uh, supervisor is 13.33. So the 3% was included in that. But because our intention was not to go over that, that was to make them uh, where they are so that we are, we can attract and retain our employees. If the cost of living is one point, remains 1.3% and we continue to give everybody at least a 3% raise, how many years from now will the town be bankrupt? A long time. Oh. Well, but, but we're moving in that direction, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I, we, we can't continue to, that was the whole idea, I thought of this survey was to figure out what we could do to avoid this 3% raise every year because other our employee salaries continue to cost us a larger and larger percentage of our budget. I mean, I, yeah, we can stop paving the streets, but I, I'm i not part of this committee. I'm just in, in the audience. Oh, I, Bob, I know that, but here, I want to explain this to you. As you, as they retire, not, not so much with the chief of police because we wanted what well, we wanted experience and we want a uh, number of years experience and that type of thing. So we're probably not going to save any money when we go out. But when if 
And when uh, a street department person, let's say the labor or the water labor, they leave and we find someone else. If we probably, if I went to Woodruff and did a little survey, I bet that we're right on target for a, for a street labor. Uh, and why it's why we didn't catch that earlier, I don't know. But and I don't disagree with what you're saying about the three percent. You know, we can't afford that every year. But either we do nothing for anyone, uh, which is the fair thing, or we we look at it and make the people that really should have an increase to put them up to be competitive, and they are doing the job. Um, but I do understand the, the, your concern about the 3%. Yeah, no, I, and I, can I say something? First, we, we did, somebody said November, uh, we have to start this process in October. And, you know, Mike Konasek was duly embarrassed because he's part of the committee and realized that not only have we not, you know, have we not come up with, but we haven't even told people a date. And I think he indicated to me three or four weeks ago that we're, that, you know, we, we look like we don't care about the employees. We just say, hold on, we'll figure this thing out and everything else. To me, what he said is true. And, uh, and maybe that's our punishment, but I, I think, I think going forward, we can sit down in October because we have to, we have to have two, we, I don't like rushing these things through. The, the state the state rules have, have been that when you pass an ordinance, you have a reading and then you have a second reading in the month after. And we always are one step behind, so we're always doing this two readings at the same meeting. We should be coming up with something in October and then we should have a salary ordinance to be passed in November and to be approved in December. And then we can, we can get it we can get going. So whatever number we we consider, uh, I I don't disagree with what Bob Lemay says, but I think you know I think right now we're you know, we're in such catch up because we you know we're already past the one quarter mark and we haven't done anything. You know, and we haven't even told the employees if they're going to get anything and what they're going to get. And uh, uh, I, I I I just think it reflects badly on all of us. Well, why is 3% the magic number? Or should we? I, 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 I'm not sure it is. I didn't interrupt you, Bill. Please don't interrupt me. The number that we're talking about is somewhat arbitrary, I think. And we talked in the beginning about a philosophical statement. Mark Swistek suggested two. Maybe two would be a good compromise for the ones that we're talking about that aren't going to be outliers that are adjusted for other reasons, just okay. to show a little bit of conservatism on the increase. Mm -hmm. um, if I look at the chart that you've got up right now, that would mean if you start at the top, the 17% for the deputy clerk is an outlier adjustment without any additional 3% on it. Your street superintendent's at three. Your street department laborers got 12.2 because it's an outlier adjustment. Mm, no, Water no, superintendent. no, 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 no. There's no, they're no, they're above. I know, but to Mary Lou's point, this is something we've been talking about for over a year now about the disparity between the street department labor and the water department labor. So let me let me continue. So then you look at the water and street department or the water superintendent, the water labor. I think Mary Lou, you're suggesting bringing them down to the whatever we decide, whether it's two or three. Is that correct? Right. Correct. I don't want and you know I got out my as soon as we're done. Uh, I got up the note that I sent my group and I said, this is what I said to uh, the water department. Good morning. The human resource committee met yesterday to review the salary survey that was conducted by HR focus this year. As the water department board, we are being asked to recommend an increase for the water department employees. The survey shows that we are competitive for the water superintendent and water labor, but a little low for the office supervisor. 
we may find out when we start recruiting for the part-time position. Mike Conisett said that LaPorte County COLA this year is 1.3%. He has put that in as a starting point. Historically, the water department has always followed whatever the town awarded. It was more like a general increase. Now they would like a merit-based increase. And then I said, we, the HR committee will meet again on, <clears throat> excuse me, April 7th to compile the increase recommended by each department. Then that recommendation will be sent to the town council for approval. Could you please give me your thoughts? And I had two water board members that came back. And so that's where I came up with the recommendation. But I want to be, uh, I think we have a good group of people and I want them all to work together and uh, not to resent. No one's going to resent the special adjustments. Wait, well, there know, probably you know will that? be. Hmm? Yeah, I, I, that's a that's quite a statement that no one will object to them. Okay, well, thanks, Mike. But I, what I'm saying is, there will be somebody that resents it. But if you look at the overall base, or if you look at what our competition is, we are below the market. And, and you're talking about a specific position, Mary Lou, below the market? Yes. We're above in some cases. We're above in some cases. You know, for instance, the water department labor. I mean, it, it depends on how much credence you put in the survey. But, you know, the water labor, if you look at that one, that's significantly above market if you look at the survey. So, but at any rate, okay, so, so for purposes of what we're talking about to move forward, then you guys are going to make a recommendation along the lines of what we talked about, but my thought would be maybe the 2% is the across the board just to show the conservatism. You do what you want. But. We should vote, shouldn't we, even though we, we don't make a decision, but uh, shouldn't we at least be consistent with whatever we agree to that we're going forward to the council? Yes. Yeah. So I, I like 2%. And, and we got to, I think we have to work on this, this uh, difference between the police and everyone else. Well, what do you mean by, every, what do you mean the difference? Mark is only spending 3.8% of his, is only increasing his budget by 3.8%. This whole group is increasing their budget by 6.9%. Mark's, Mark's sitting there going, wait a second, what do I chop me? I want to be 6.9%. Well, he only has two people that we have to make an adjustment for, and we have four. And I think we've already agreed that whatever the percent is, it will be across the board for everybody. Well, that's why we have to do the arithmetic again and, and go back and when put drop these twos in here, or if it's going to be two or three, and then see what the numbers come out to. So, so let's for the sake of argument say we're going to do uh, the 2%. Oh, good. And these did not see superintendent. Is this one two or is this stay the way stay the way it is? What where are you, Mike? Which I'm line? At street superintendent. Okay. That would be they all would get two. Unless it's the adjustment. And then this one wouldn't be two because it's are you on adjustment. Are you on line five now or 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, this would be, so this wouldn't be two, this would be something else because it's an adjustment. And um, camp and activity, okay, that's, this is a good deal. So counselor, Long Beach summer camp program. Okay, forget that. Uh, and then water department office manager, that would be, Two percent. You jumped the line there, Mike. They're suggesting the water is going to be an outlier adjustment. The manager. Yeah, the manager, manager. There's. there's oh, a, yeah, 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 yeah. There's two figures, and I, I don't want to get into this, but but the okay. number that I gave to you uh, earlier, Mike, is the right number. It's. And Mike, I did. Mike, I did text you at the last meeting that the water department office manager makes sixteen fifty, and that was on our. Even when you and I worked on these things last fall, it's six. I did text it to you during the meeting and say that's that's not correct. Yeah, it's sixteen fifty. Okay, for the office manager. Okay. The raise is the suggested raise is the magnitude of 220, Mary Lou. Uh, let's see. So, yes, raise that I put in was five percent for the yes. water, John. And if we change it to two percent, which Mary Lou is saying is good, I can look myself. Uh, Bill, we're talking, I'm talking about the water department office manager being the outlier. Your yes. uh, the correct the correct hourly rate is 1650. Correct. And it would go to 1870. Right. So that percentage will change out there on the end. Okay. Uh, I have it as 13.33. Yeah, so that's correct. Okay. Right. It's updating as it as we go through. So um So, so now here's my question. Uh, we need, we still need to look at the uh, two other part, well, they are part-time people, the building inspector and the BZA APC administrative assistant. Um, do you want to put the 2% in so we have some, so we know what the budget is and then wait to hear back from uh, Larry and Mike? Or do you want me to just leave it? Blank. I've put it in here. Okay. Okay. I did. I'm sorry. I didn't see it. Mike, you you need to put it in on the line right above where you were. The water superintendent will be a two percenter as well. Even though this is. Oh, you know I can't. I, I'm. You know what? I can't see all that. Let me. Oh. Oh, that's even better. <laughs> You guys were blocking my view. Hey, so, so the water superintendent is below, but you're saying it's still it's two percent. Correct. That's inconsistent with what we've been talking. Well, about. That, that's there. Therein lies some of the outlier discussion that we may want to talk about at this level. Certainly, the council will have to address it. But your street superintendent right now, if I believe these numbers, I think Bill corrected him. I hope. 2932 is the street department superintendent and the water super, uh, superintendent is at 2940. So the, the council will have to decide whether. The, wa the water superintendent I have is 2851. Well, that's what I'm saying. We need the correct information. Does somebody know what that number is? I just, I've got the payroll here. Hold on that we worked on. The right number for water superintendent, if you're there, Mike, okay, is twenty eight fifty one. Okay. 
That's what I have. What? That's what I, oh, wait a minute. That's what I have, Bill. Okay. And so that's, um, and so that is, uh, this equals, this equals this time, oops. Time. One and wait. Okay, oh. What did you say, Bill? I, know, I just said. I just added 57 cents. <laughs> but we're suggesting that he stays at a 2% rather than 5, which is what it's showing. Yeah, yeah I know, but I, I just did 2% of 2851 is 57 cents. So, Mike, to answer your question, in my mind, that, and I think if I recall, that the payroll people, the uh, New Age, whatever they were called, I forget. Yeah, New New Focus suggested yeah. that that their information was a little bit skewed. In other words, I right. don't believe that a water superintendent with the duties that our water and superintendent currently has, as opposed to a water superintendent in a town that has their own treatment plants and wells and, you know, to say that we're 20% under the market, I don't think is a correct. Yeah. The problem was there wasn't enough, there weren't enough positions that lined up exactly like ours. Yeah. And I think they took a stab at it and they missed. She thought it was probably six, seven, eight thousand dollars less than than this. Which would mean that a two percent on top of what he's making is probably fair, I guess, is what we're saying. Yeah, 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 yes, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So then coming back here, uh, this is, what is this? Does this remain 17%? Yes. And this one? That one's still too, oh, wait a minute. What, street Department Labor? Nope, yep. that should be 12.2%. 12.23, I have. And then the, the seasonals are getting 2%. I, I just plugged that in here. Um, okay. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I think Sarah was suggesting they didn't, did not need raises. Did I misunderstand that? I think I heard that too, John. And then she said to let her know for next year. The only thing I would suggest to you is, you know, if these are teachers and we're paying them ten dollars an hour, that's different than some seventeen-year-old pimple-faced kid. Well, well, we're paying them quite a bit more than ten dollars an hour. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. But even at thirteen dollars an hour, I, I don't. I mean, I'm I'm not a strong proponent of huge increases, but the kind of money we're spending is insignificant. So I, I it doesn't bother me one way or another. Whatever you guys recommend is. Since she since she did say she didn't care if they had increases this year, let's be conservative and not do that because they've had some pretty hefty ones in the past. And be, I'm going to ask Mike not to say this is not germane, but the park department does did pay for part of the part of the uh, stop twenty four and is also paying for lots of the beach steps and everything else. So I, I know that this shouldn't enter into our discussion about salaries, but, but the guy who sees the money going in and out says they have been, they have been very good citizens. Yeah, but again, you're, you're yeah. exactly right, Bill. This is not germane because we're talking about people's performance and what we're paying them to do the job. Okay, so do the math, Mike, add those up. Once we make these adjustments this year, then we should be in a good position relative to Bob's comments earlier. We yeah. should be in a better position moving forward to adjust based on merit 
more so than we're doing this year. We're trying to correct the outliers yeah. based on the survey. And then from this point forward, the, the cost of living should be more a part of what we do. Unless you have another outlier situation where somebody's duties significantly change. Oh, Mike, one more thing on water office manager. We got to go plug that in in that column on line 15 over to S. Or maybe, no, maybe you already did. Okay. Uh, you got, yeah, you got to include, you got to go down to 15. If you can. Oops, it didn't take it. Okay. Well, no, I don't have a number in here. Okay. So this is what these are the this is the amount of money we're going to increase our budget by. Well, you got to fix the one for the water thing and then you'll be good at the bottom. On line 15. And that goes up two dollars and twenty cents. So does it feed off a of column S or what? 220, I see. 13.3. Okay. Okay. So then um So then this equals uh, where else see this. Oh no, I can't do that. So moving forward, you'll have good information every year, comparatively speaking, in, in this worksheet to, to make your decisions based on Yeah, and the other thing is we have we now have a baseline to know what the maybe to how to fix the ranges each year and we can also i think go to the aim survey and look at that too and that will be helpful all right i i have to i i'm not this isn't a computer I'm, i have to go back and rethink what i'm doing here because i'm okay. i'm lost at this point in time so in terms of what what these increases are going to cost us okay so I, I need to spend a couple hours on this and sort it out. Uh, so, so based on that, what's going on here then? Nothing. This is this. Nothing. Okay. Okay. What? Uh, so I'll. I'll recalculate this. I'll clean it up, and um, I will send it out to everyone. Okay. And then I will, as soon as we're done here, I will send out an email to Mike Gorman and Larry Wall and ask them for their input. And I will tell them what, uh, if you guys, if you all think that was appropriate, what I told the Water Department Board on what we were working on. Does that sound okay? Yeah, that sounds okay. Good. And based on what we know and what we're doing, we'd recommend 2%. Okay. That's fair. Okay, anything else? I mean, any uh, big concerns? Are we, uh, did we make progress here? Or are we spinning our wheels or what do you think? I think we're good. So we'll meet again, not till next month, right? Well, the, the, you want to take this up at the, at the, on the 12th, right? Right. So Monday. So, but I mean our group, so we, cause we still have other things to work on. Correct. Yeah. Okay. But uh, so send this to the town council on Monday or not? 
Okay, so, so I think what I'm gonna do is recommend that people who weren't at this meeting from the town council, um, you know, maybe watch this meeting because I think it's imperative that they understand all of this when they make their decision. Okay. Don't you agree? Yes. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just send an email to the town council recommending that they watch this. It'll be okay. on the website. And then also, um, Bill, will you put this on the agenda? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, the one question I have is we don't have an attorney present, but we've got three council members since a public meeting. It's fine. Um, is it possible to uh, to submit to the council? for discussion without without the final uh you know i mean because it's not public record until it becomes an ordinance but what i what i would like to do is if we could get this thing together uh that we could at least say joe blow or, or not joe blow but but the guy who has joe blow's position uh is going to get this much per hour and everything else and we and that number We've done the math. We've done the 1.02 times times the people who aren't, aren't outliers. We've put in the outliers, and we've got that. And that you could at least approve that to be put together into a into a salary ordinance that we could approve at the next meeting. I don't think we can do this all between the seventh and the twelfth, but it would seem to me that we could at least get everybody to agree. We've got three people here. Who are on the council, and we've got Coker and and Johnstone to come. Uh, does that make any sense that we could? Did you, I I think that we the have actual is. numbers that would have tied, and we're not talking about fifty positions. We're talking about thirteen or fourteen. Yeah, I think the council could approve tentatively, and then have the attorney write the ordinance. And and the other thing is just as a point of reference, I think it was HR focus. They had some really good ideas about a, a salary ordinance, what it should and shouldn't have. And I wrote that down. Um, and so that it defines it. And I thought that was, I think that we should move towards something like that. So there's no ambiguity anytime. I've always been confused about why we put, why we publish ranges. I thought well, yeah. right, that, that's gone, John. <laughs> We're not doing that anymore? No. Good. Good. Range is better. It could be salary ranges are from positions, and yeah, but not. Actually, I think the, the, the ordinances that I've read, the salary ordinances I've read, have minimums and maximums in there for positions. Yeah. We, I thought the SBOA slapped our hand on that, though. Yeah. I thought the issue was having uh, zero to 10 years, 10 to 15 years, 15 to 20 years, 25 to 30. I, I wasn't there, but that's my. Hey, Mike, that's that's absolutely correct. They slapped our hand because the prime example is uh, our great the police chief. I mean, based on that, well, he's got, I think, over 30 years of experience. And so we can't penalize somebody and say, oh, no, they just started here. So they're at zero experience. So they, that's what they ask us to remove. And I think I think Bob may ask the attorney or, Bob, or Bill to take that out of there. So it's my, my, my first few uh, salary ordinances didn't have anything to do with experience ranges or anything. So, you know, New Focus said that was good and everybody else has said it's not good. So we're we're doing that. Uh, but 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 when we're going back to a more standard uh salary ordinance, which you know, with which does positions. So we can do that. I, I would like them to add I don't think we have to do it for this one, but I think I think that idea of getting certifications as getting bonuses for those that that's very cool i think you know that we that would be of benefit i think if we could do, if we could do that you earn a you earn a degree or a certificate or something I and mean, i suppose we have to put some boundaries on that but that, that would be something that would be wonderful for the 2022 you know i i'd like to request uh uh, I, I'd like to contact New Focus and have them give us an estimate to set up, give us our, based on their research, give us uh, our salary ranges. 
provide us a salary range chart and uh, an estimate to create a ordinance. Can I get an estimate for that from, from them? Sure, I think that's a good idea. Because they, they've done this hundreds of times. Uh, you know, we'd start and would take us, anyway. Okay, let me, let, me, let me do that and see what they have to say. The only other suggestion I might make along those lines is, you know, we use that bank attorney, the labor attorney to peek at it. I know Chris does a great job, but I'm not so sure he's that well versed in the labor law. It might be good if we're going to make that adjustment to the salary ordinance for once and for all. You know, you've got this other insurance issue hanging out on the retirement and all that, the, you know, extending the retirement benefits out. It might be good to have somebody like that take a peek at this thing, even if you don't use new focus to, to, to actually do it if they're too expensive. But it might be good to get a labor attorney's eyes on this thing for once. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Mike, can you find out what New Focus would cost, would, would charge yeah. us for a salary ordinance and those ranges? Uh, and then, Bill, if you could put that on the agenda for that meeting, we can approve that on Monday. Yeah, no, I think that's, that's good. And, Mike, while you've got that New Focus, will you ask them as a package deal about uh, the retiree medical, if they have any boilerplate ones? The chief gave me some really good ones, and then at the early on, our I think it was in January meeting, we kind of defined what we wanted in there. And that way we'll make sure we're current. But I'm, I was assuming that when the attorney, once we gave it to him, he would make sure everything was correct according to the new laws. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, okay. Just as a, as a comment, Bob, Lamar, that, uh, I do feel that we're going to find that, that new focus is going to be more experienced than and even the salary, I mean, or John Wilma to the, the, the salary attorney, because they were, have worked with so many different salary uh, ordinances. Yeah. Well, and I got think a couple, we've got a couple options, so let's, let's yeah, we can yeah. price them out and see what... No, I think they'd be more reasonable. Good quality products, probably. Okay, so we're done? Yeah. All right, thanks, except, everybody. Except for that you, you forgot about the 20% increase on the town council salaries for next year. <laughs> uh, we got to assess their performance first. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> All right, John, I second that. We can't do it to right. ourselves, Mayor. It's going to be to the benefit of whoever comes after us. That's the yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's that's true. Okay. You can't do it during the year, but you can do it for next year. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Well, Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Mike, for doing all that. Thanks, Mike. Thank you.